Welcome to the channel, everybody. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both books published by Simon & Schuster Saga Press. Today I'm going to be showing you my entire World War II book collection. It only takes up one shelf amongst my many other um, nonfiction books. Here, we, This is down in my dining room. Amongst well, we're amongst my nonfiction book collection here, so I'll give you kind of a uh, just a quick little tour of it. Um, my main library is upstairs in the bedroom where I've got like five thousand novels. This is all the nonfiction stuff, but I wanted to show you my World War II stuff because I am a World War II history buff of a sort. I mean, that's my collection right there, and we'll go over each book. A little bit um, and I will mention uh, each book specifically um, what's good about it um, why you should have it in your own collection and then I will also talk about um, some of the places I've been because I've been to some World War II sites but I wanted to start up top with probably my two favorite um, books by um, well, this gets World Wars II started, obviously. Um, Adolf Hitler by John Tolland, probably the greatest um, biography of uh, Adolf Hitler ever written. It was written by John Tolland, who actually knew Adolf Hitler, and it won the Pulitzer Prize. And then the other real famous book about the rise of the Nazis, The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich by William Shirer. This is, these two books, if you want to know why World War II started, look no further, just pick up these two books if you can, read them. You will get to learn a lot about politics, about why things in the world happen the way they do, how Hitler rose to power, how he gained all of it. So that's the start of World War II with these books. Just absolutely mesmerizing. I, I can't say, I mean, I probably introduced them as great books, but I mean, how can anything be great that involves um, that son of a bitch and all of these son of a bitches that followed him? But anyway, if you want to read about how sons of bitches get into power, there you go. Okay, so let's start over here with... Um, some books about the um the war itself and this trilogy by rick atkinson starts with an army of dawn a day of battle and ends with guns of last light so this trilogy here by rick atkinson is absolutely dynamite we start with the war in africa Again, another Pulitzer Prize winning piece of work. And then we move over into the war in Sicily and Italy, and then the war on the um, Eastern Europe from 19... So, so this starts, I mean, it, it's a comprehensive view of the entire war. And these books are thick. They are great. Each one of them is about 800 or 900 pages of absolute superbly written history and as an aside Ritka Atkinson is also he did that World War II trilogy um, this is the um, first book in his Revolutionary War trilogy if you want to get that so he's going to do what he did with the World War II with these three books he's going to be doing a trilogy of Revolutionary War books which is super dope so Let's um, save this one for last because it is one of my favorite books. And so um, we're going to save that for last because it comes last. Uh, let's talk about um, why we were fighting um, the war to begin with. And we will pull these two books out, Auschwitz and Anne Frank. Now, I have not been to Auschwitz, but I have been to... Dachau prison camp in Germany. It was a very somber and sobering experience. I've also been to the Anne Frank house in Amsterdam. And I'll tell you folks, 
when I went to the Anne Frank house, that was moving. I actually broke down and cried in the middle of the tour. And I can just, I can picture the, uh, all the people that are on the tour with me just like, who is that fat, middle-aged American man bawling like a baby in the middle of this? But I did. It was, it was, uh, this is why we fought World War II was because, um, to save people like Anne Frank from places like Auschwitz. So let's move those over here. We've talked about them. Now let's get over to um, the, uh, which ones do I want to talk about next? Well, let's just do them in order here. Flyboys by James Bradley. This is about, this is one of the most gripping books I've ever read. This is about the war over in Japan. Because, yeah, we were, not only were we fighting the Nazis, we were fighting the Japanese at the time. And the Japanese, this book is about George Bush Sr. and his squadron of airplane guys that got shot down over an island, a Japanese island. And everybody, George Bush was the only one that was rescued. The other, the other, um, the other flyboys were captured by the Japanese and the Japanese soldiers were hungry and they actually cannibalized those, those soldiers that they captured. So it's just an interesting book and something that I did not know about our president, George Bush until George Bush senior, until I read this book. Another great book by James Bradley is flags of our fathers. Of course, that is the photo the world famous photo that they made the statue of the Iwo Jima statue, which I've been to that statue in Washington, DC at Arlington cemetery. It's super cool, but flags of our fathers. That is another story about the battle in the Pacific. Now let's go to, well, we'll just talk about the Pacific itself. Hugh Ambrose, the son of Stephen Ambrose wrote this book about the war in the Pacific, which they actually made the HBO series about this book. It's a great book, an overall look at the war that took place in the Pacific. Masters of Air. This was one of my favorite books because I was obsessed with the B-17 bombers when I was a kid. And this is a book just about the people that flew those B-17 bombers over Europe. Um, man, when I was a kid, I used to make the little plastic models of the B-17 bombers, and I probably made about 20 of them as a kid. I had a whole fleet. I named each one of them different names and painted little, uh, painted little logos on them and stuff. Now let's get to probably my favorite World War II writer of all time, and that's Stephen Ambrose. This is the guy that got me into collecting World War II stuff, especially after I read D-Day. Oh my gosh, I couldn't believe what I was reading when I read that. He also wrote The Band of Brothers, Stephen Ambrose did. Of course, the... Uh, HBO series, series Band of Brothers was uh, based off of this as was the Pacific HBO series based off of his son's book. Then we've got Citizen Soldiers, which is about the liberation of Germany. We've got, uh, this one's upside down for some reason, but it is called The Wild Blue Ones. Again, another great look at the, at the pilots and the airplanes. These are not World War II books per se, but they are written by Stephen Ambrose. This one is about the... Uh, Intercontinental Railroad, and this one is about Lewis and Clark. They are not part of the, uh, they just happen to be there. This is a great book about um, combat and how soldiers die in battle. Well, that's the name of it right there. It was, it's an interesting look at um, death. And then we will close out my World War II collection with a book on Churchill who I think was the guy, him and Eisenhower, they were the ones that came up with the plans to defeat the Nazis. And then last but not least, this is the one I wanted to show you last because this is called Savage Continent. And this is about the end of the war, the war and how Germany and Europe was just decimated by this war. 
It's called Europe and the Aftermath of World War II. And if you thought the war itself was disturbing and horrific and unbearably terrible for everybody, the aftermath of the war was just as savage and awful for the people still living in those, con in those countries. And they had to rebuild, and they did rebuild. It took them a long time, and it was a lawless land. If you remember how the early United States in the 1800s was a lawless place with the uh, expansion into the West, it was almost... Europe after World War II was probably one of the most lawless and crime-ridden places on the planet. And you, you for a dec almost a decade, it was just awful to live there. This is an interesting book about what it's like picking up the pieces after war. Anyway, that, my friends, is my uh, World War II collection. I hope you uh, enjoyed that and found some things maybe you'll get. We'll put them all back on a shelf so they all look nice and fancy. And there, they're all back looking nice and fancy.